Welcome to Night Sounds. My name is Bill Pierce, and I am at your service. I really mean that. I'm not here as a leader or a celebrity, but as a friend, and better yet, a servant. Because basically, this program, traditionally, and from its inception, has been designed as a servant ministry. Night Sounds is given to servanthood. And I think anyone who names the name of Christ follows the laws and precepts and compassion and grace of our God is a servant. That might not sit well with everyone. The Christian concept of leadership conflicts for the accepted ideas of Western culture. Servanthood is not exactly the American way. We sort of favor the concept of the rugged individual who pulls himself up by his bootstraps. And we, we almost make gods of heroes, or we deify them. Sort of like the ancient Greeks, from whom we borrowed so much of our current thought, we still worship the image of the God-man. Back there it was Adonis, Apollo, Aphrodite, and yet in essence they're still competing in the Superdome, performing in Hollywood or topping the Fortune 500 listing. Tonight's program, with a very simple title, Are You a Servant? I'm going to pull a, an old recording. It's an orchestration by Ralph Carmichael. A very effulgent sound using professional musicians. It's really a song of ownership and of servanthood. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me, not for years of time alone, but for eternity. It's a song of love and a song of service. And I would imagine that many of you who are familiar with this particular piece of music will say, wow, it's good to hear that again. It's been years since that was played or sung. Well, you'll hear the old ones on Night Sound, so let's rejoice again. to fade the music under for a moment while I turn to a couple of verses of scripture which give authenticity to our title tonight of Night Sounds, which is, Are You a Servant? We're going to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, reading from the New International Version. Quote, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death even death on a cross.
The old gospel song, Now I Belong to Jesus, written by Norman Clayton so many years ago. It's interesting how those songs have all but faded out of common usage. Yet we do have some good music on the scene today. But we don't want to lose sight of the old either and play nothing but contemporary in lieu of some of the traditional sounds. Back to the subject of servanthood. Tonight's program with the title, Are You a Servant? This is one of the basic questions that anyone who names the name of Christ should ask himself or herself. Much of the New Testament was written to address the superstar syndrome. We find the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 2 especially, the beginning of that chapter, demeaning his own, not personhood, but his status. He did not call himself an orator. He said, I came to you not with super words, of men's wisdom, skillfully delivered, but with the power of God. I came to you in fear and trembling. That doesn't sound much like a, a Christian leader, probably the chief of apostles. And this person, Paul, hammered continually on the theme that the kingdom of God is composed of many interdependent members. We all have different functions, but we all need each other. Someone said the teenager who picks up the trash after the worship service is as important as the most talented speaker. But because the pagan idea of leadership pervades our churches, many of us are in constant pursuit of celebrity status. Rather than seeking the favor of God, we seek the recognition of other people. Some time ago, I recall receiving a promotional packet from a new contemporary Christian artist. That packet had show business written all over it. There were five different portraits of the singer. And immediately... Our first impression was, wow, what a neat photograph. What a good-looking person. I'm glad he's on our side. The first indication of servanthood was in the title of one of the numbers that was recorded. There's something about us, even in the service of Christ. We've got to get ourselves in there somewhere. We've got to have people know us. Not too long ago, in a large city in our country, a very gifted servant of God, whose ministry was intensely spiritual, was canceled in a concert appearance because his advance ticket sales were so low that they didn't think they could risk losing their shirts on such an unknown talent. Rather than seek the favor of God, seeking the recognition of others, how well is he known? How big a crowd would he or she bring to the auditorium? In his book, What Happened to the Fire, J. Lee Grady said, We prefer to rule than to serve. We are driven not because we want to meet the needs of others, but because we want to be admired by them. We are settling for success in the eyes of people rather than a heavenly reward. And once again, in Philippians chapter 2, we're exhorted to have the attitude that was in Jesus Christ. Paul said further, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility. Consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. 
Do you recall the temptations of Jesus? He was tempted before he began his ministry to accomplish his mission Satan's way. He could have proclaimed himself the ruler of all the kingdoms of the world, and Satan would have granted him more honor and fame than any earthly king has ever known. But Jesus rejected his method to greatness. The path he chose to walk was one of humility, self-denial, obscurity. And he would die virtually unknown if he'd had his way. And Jesus told all of us, his followers, that we must follow the same path. He said to pursue advancement, promotion, or fame in the eyes of others, seeking our own life, is to forfeit fruitfulness in his kingdom. In fact, he gave the image of a seed, hardly noticeable. Before it can produce anything, must die in the ground. Self-denial is not natural to us. We're taught to advance. We're promoted to the next level, from kindergarten to first grade on through to college, post-grad, specialties. It's a grading on the curve, pass-fail factor. Nobody wants to fail. Nobody wants to step down. So tonight, I guess our message is, let us humble ourselves before the Lord our God. Maybe take a look at the past week, our intent, our attitudes, our motives, even our words. What kind of an image have we given to others? And even if the Lord does use us in front of other people, how are we using that advantage? These are all questions that any servant of God, whether he or she is in the public eye, in the performing arts or not, needs to take care of, and once again, needs to have surveillance over. Tonight's program, really about servanthood. As I was thinking of music tonight, which has... <laughs> many times said, takes the most time in our production. It's the most, not only time-consuming, but the kind of effort we need to think back what particular title would fit or framework our verbal continuity. And if your library has any of these titles, so much the better, but Boy, I'll tell you, I'm, I, one of the reasons I'm glad I've lived so long and spanned more than a generation in gospel music is that I do remember some of the old tunes, such as the one we began with tonight. And even one of the newer ones, possibly this next song you have never heard prior to this moment. But I'd like to play it for you because it speaks of servanthood and the young man who did the solo work, Dwayne Hamilton is himself a servant heart. And that's why I feel that he can adequately express these words to us, charging us all and encompassing and encouraging and receiving us all into that beautiful collection of servants for our God. Use me, I am trusting in you. I surrender control of my love. Now, Lord, carry me through. Use me. I am trusting in you. I surrender control.
Soloist Dwayne Hamilton, the song entitled Use Me, Carry Me Through. There's so many influences that seek to just sort of appease our natures in the service of Christ. What is our rating? What kinds of audiences do we draw? Tonight, as we think of servanthood, I believe most of you who've studied the scriptures at all Recall that image of Jesus kneeling before his disciples, washing their feet after a long and busy day on the dusty roads of Galilee. And how shocked Peter was when he said, Oh, you're not going to wash my feet. And the Lord's soft but firm words to him, If I don't wash your feet, you have no part of me. And of course, impulsive Peter in extreme said, Oh, well, then wash my head, my hands, and my feet. And I'm very well aware of the fact that many, including myself, would say, Well, to be a servant of God, you have to be somebody special. I'm not sure I'm qualified. Let's take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 10. The question, What does the Lord your God ask of you? but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees. Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. There is our credential and qualification. Tonight's program, once again, as we think of servanthood, I believe we all know the word humility. I don't know whether we've experienced it or not, and usually if we have, we'll not even recognize it. This is a necessity in Christian work. If we're going to minister the grace of God, the scriptural mandate, he must increase, I must decrease. We have been adopted as sons and daughters of God. And as we think of tonight's program of servanthood, and humility. I'd like to read a little bit of writing tonight by Leona Choi about a person who has been in Christian work and perhaps has crossed that thin line into self-exaltation. She wrote, Fog descends imperceptibly, night settles silently. Embers of a fire die unobserved. Strength declines gradually. Blossoms fade and wither quietly. And I didn't even know that the glory of the Lord had departed from me. In the eyes of men, the crust, the shell, the sham remains. The mask is still in place. Routine grinds on, but suddenly I stand exposed, naked in my spirit before you, O God, with nothing but a memory of your anointing and flow of power. But it is only I who am surprised, not you. Tonight we seek for purity. Who may stand before the Lord God in his presence? According to the scriptures, those with clean hands and a pure heart. Once again tonight in our music, we turn to a song of discipleship, a song of prayer, that we might be pure in heart as servants of God. I look at my heart, I don't see much purity in it. I see a lot of years of service, but how have I served? Has it been in my flesh? I don't know. As the years accumulate in any of our experiences, we begin to learn more and more about what we didn't know. And I cite my mother again, who at 93 told me, Billy, I have so much to learn yet in the service of Christ. 
Here's Amy Shreve to sing a song of prayer entitled Pure in Heart, something we all want to seek. Oh Lord, your eyes have pierced their way to my most secret part. Beneath your gaze may I be song of prayer by Amy Shreve, Pure in Heart. This is Night Sounds. I'm Bill Pierce, with you very happily so tonight, considering the subject of servanthood. Many of you write and ask for copies of past programs. We've just produced a broadcast catalog, we call it, giving the titles of scores of past programs which have been largely requested by listeners. If we can serve you through this means, this is our desire. To pray with you and encourage you is really the foremost project we have at hand, to honor Jesus Christ and to help each other. Going back to that very familiar portion of John, the Gospel, chapter 13, Jesus said, Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. So, unlike football or other sports, Jesus didn't call these disciples together in a huddle and incite them to compete for first place. He demonstrated to them that the battle would be won only through mutual love, covenant, cooperation, transparent relationships. Let's set our sights on these tonight. And as we continue in our lives of service for Christ, it's easy to get off the mark and to get your eyes and affections on even a legitimate substitute for servanthood. Get out on a legitimate tangent. There are so many of them. But tonight, let us not accept synthetics. Let's accept only the leading of our Lord through his holy word. I am so glad for the cooperation of Christians banding together in the bond of fellowship with the head being Jesus Christ, none of us thinking himself or herself above the others. Interesting how even the disciples got into this particular tangent. They said, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom? 
And quickly Jesus knew exactly what they were thinking. And he leveled them and us tonight once again with the phrase, He who would be the greatest among you, let him be the least. He was just full of reversals, wasn't he? We would never expect that the meek should inherit the earth. Or that the last would be first. Or that he'd use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Or that his strength would be made perfect in weakness. But let's focus on these verses and give ourselves once again as servants of his to full-blown servanthood, not celebrity status, or our image, or our press releases, or our agents, or our performance, but may we be saturated by God's power and His Spirit. Thank you so much for joining with me tonight and for helping me along with your prayers. I'm stammering and stuttering and <laughs> feel like a beginner in Speech 101 or something. Our mailing address remains Night Sounds, Wheaton, Illinois, 60189. If we can serve you further with a program catalog, the music of Night Sounds, so be it. Till next we meet by his power and strength, a good day to you tomorrow, and a peaceful and restful good night.